All right, let's get started. Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on social media lawsuits. Are you prepared for a records request? My name is Megan, and we are very excited to have you here today. Before we get started, there are a few housekeeping items that I want to take care of. All attendees are on mute, but please feel free to use the question function to submit questions. There will be time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. And lastly, after the webinar, we will be sending out an email to share additional resources, the recording of the webinar, and the slide deck itself. Now that that's taken care of, I am very excited to introduce you to our speaker today, John Donnelly. John is an account executive at Archive Social and has been working with public agencies for five years to help them navigate the complicated issues regarding public records law and social media. John has helped hundreds of cities, counties, law enforcement agencies, school districts, and others to get set up with a social media archive. In his off time, John enjoys hiking with his dog Miller, learning how to cook new foods, and is looking forward to being able to safely attend local concert and other theater events. Well, John, I can completely agree with you there. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over. Yeah, I think we'd be hard pressed to find someone that wouldn't agree with um, with getting back to a little bit of sense of normalcy. But I appreciate that, Megan. Thank you so much. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. And again, a welcome. Uh, and thank you for taking time today to learn more about how 2020 has changed the legal landscape for for um, uh, risk when it comes to social media and what you can do to help prepare your agency and reduce risk when it comes to a record request. Um, despite the fact that I personally work with public communicators directly every day on this topic, this is actually my first time conducting a webinar for Archive Social. So I'm really, really excited to have this opportunity today. And, and for the webinar, um, we'll cover the following topics. Uh, first, we'll look at how 2020 has changed the landscape of social media and legal risk, especially for public communicators. We'll then discuss the trend around the country we've seen of social media lawsuits and the costs of public records requests for government agencies. We'll also discuss the risks to an agency of not archiving social media. And finally, uh, we'll finish up with a demonstration of a live archive from a current customer of ours, that being the city of Holland, uh, Michigan. Throughout the webinar, if there is anything that I go over uh, that you have questions or concerns about, uh, especially items that maybe you haven't thought of before or maybe doesn't quite add up to you, um, as Megan mentioned, don't hesitate to submit those throughout the, uh, the webinar today through the question function, and we'll try and address them uh, during the Q&A. Uh, of course, depending on how many questions are submitted, we may elect to reach out to you directly if we aren't able to, to cover it during the webinar but um, don't let that stop you from submitting them. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started uh, talking about the unprecedented year of 2020 and how it has affected social media for government agencies. So folks, there's really no way around it between you know, national controversies, countrywide protests, a big election, and on top of all of this, a global pandemic, there's really been no shortage of work for public communicators in this year. It's been incredi incredible to see public communicators using social media like never before to do things like protect citizens, help keep them informed of, of local protests and natural disasters, as well as battle misinformation and frankly, disinformation online to try and save lives. In review of over 300 million records in our archive, as of August this year, we have seen about a 44% increase in daily social media record creation for public agencies compared to pre-coronavirus and an 18 to 20% average increase in growth since March alone. On top of all of this social media use, a recent survey performed by Archive Social showed that 55% of government communications teams are only one to two people to handle this explosion of social media usage. Stretching already busy teams to respond to citizens that have moved on to social media to get rapid information about the pandemic. I know on the, the overwhelming majority of conversations that I have with communicators, um, social media is oftentimes one of several other hats that are being worn among other day-to-day -day responsibilities. 
Um, there's not oftentimes a dedicated 24 seven social media guru that's in house. Uh, and so two examples that really uh, demonstrate this increase in activity um, across the country include first in Minneapolis. I mean, wow, take a look at this graph. It's pretty dramatic, that, that, that really uh, dramatic increase in social media activity level, obviously as a result of an insurgence of COVID-19 uh, information, as well as protests over racial inequality. This sent their social media usage almost 25% higher. In Miami-Dade County, while battling you know, rising COVID-19 infections and the most active hurricane uh, season on record, um, communicators used social media to inform and assist citizens at levels more than 300% where they were in January of 2020. Government communicators are clearly using social media more than ever before this year in an effort to inform citizens and keep them safe. But this communication has not come without risk to government agencies. The outset of the pandemic, in addition to national unrest, has led citizens to call for more accountability and transparency from their government agencies. In fact, over the past 18 months, we've seen lawsuit after lawsuit around First Amendment issues on social media increase from around one per month to nearly one new lawsuit every week. And while lawsuits involving social media are not limited to First Amendment concerns, those are certainly the most prevalent. Whether the lawsuit is caused by a citizen's First Amendment concerns, by a citizen feeling like a record request was not satisfied properly, or by a lack of clarity over what is or isn't a record on social media, ultimately, it really doesn't matter because one thing is certain, the increased reliance on social media to assist and protect citizens means that agencies are facing new risks and new costs associated with their presence online. Oftentimes, when I'm working with agencies, they ask me for specific examples of what costs can look like when it comes to lawsuits over social media. And recently, in a conversation with the police chief in Perryville, Maryland, they estimated that if an agency goes to court, costs could balloon as high as $40,000 a week of litigation. Aside from you know, these possible costs for lawsuits, agencies also face the possible costs of simply processing public records requests for social media. In fact, the, the Georgia Emergency Management Agency estimated that it would cost them over $22,000 to respond to a record request for correspondence regarding COVID-19. And in Pennsylvania, agencies that have actually failed to respond to public record requests for social media have paid on average $30,000, and in some cases more than $70,000. Finally, the city of Elgin, Texas is now hiring two additional staff members to try to handle the sheer amount of public records requests that they're receiving uh, coming out to about 20 to 30 per week. And all over the country, we've seen the increased cost of compliance with the public record law. And in all 50 states, social media can be considered a public record. In an archive social survey of government communicators, it was found that nearly one in four records requests today specifically reference social media content. And almost all public record laws explicitly define records as being created regardless of physical form. In that same survey, it was found that almost three out of four agencies have received a social media public record request, highlighting the, the real growth of these kinds of requests for public agencies. Now, in my discussions with, with public communicators, I oftentimes get told that you know, hey, John, we've really never received a record request for social media. And frankly, that's, that's not too terribly surprising. Many records requests we see agencies get contain more broad and all-encompassing language where, for example, a citizen or an interest group is asking for any and all documents about, about a particular topic or maybe all communications made or received by the agency and, and citizen John Doe, for example. 
And so as agencies and citizens alike continue to rely on social media more and more to communicate over more traditional means of communication, we're finding that those individuals and entities that are making records requests are starting to hold agencies accountable for social media when doing so. And ultimately, as these requests become more commonplace, the challenges to agencies are really real. Now, social media is very dynamic, meaning that people can edit, change, and delete their comments 24-7 at any time. And there's a lot of different ways that records can get lost, but once records are lost off social media, they are deleted forever, no longer reproducible by the network. And it's really interesting where the social media networks actually come into play here because um, they actually have no requirement to retain these records or even to help an agency to produce them. Um, this means that government agencies can be faced with increased risk where records that they need to ensure compliance with the record law could be unavailable when going back to the networks to uh, try and reproduce it. And in a study conducted this year, Archive Social found that over the course of one year, the likelihood of a social media post being deleted was approximately one in 12. So what this means is, is that, you know, if your agency simply does nothing to retain social media records, nearly one in 12 social media communications could go missing by this same time next year. And earlier, we discussed how so the social media networks themselves have no requirements to, to actually retain this information. But in fact, Facebook, for example, clearly states this in their terms of service, where they state that they will not guarantee providing information, if, especially if it has been deleted. So this really leads to you know, what kind of strategies are available for government communicators to try to protect themselves in the face of all of this risk. And the first strategy, and unfortunately really the, the all too common one that we see, is for agencies to simply do nothing to reduce the risks that we discussed today. Whether it's due to costs, lack of concern over these risks, um, you know, some agencies decide just to simply do nothing to maintain these social media records. The, the second strategy, which is oftentimes seen as more of a middle ground approach, uh, for some agencies at least, is to take uh, manual screenshots of their social media pages and then copy and paste those screenshots into something like a Word document to try and find later. Finally, uh, many agencies decide that really the only way to appropriately handle the stringent public record requirements placed on them uh, with regards to social media is to have an automated archive that can capture their content. When it comes to the risk of not archiving social media content or option number one that we looked at earlier, um, the problems are many. I mean, many communicators have told us that by not retaining these social media records, they would fundamentally be out of compliance with the public record law in their state. And of course, this can lead to bad press and image problems for agencies. And especially in the cultural and legal environment discussed earlier due to 2020, this can make an agency appear to lack concern over transparency and accountability. With regards to that second approach, which is taking uh, manual screenshots, the cost of capturing content this way can be really surprising. You know, to retain all records can mean, mean needing to hire extra help. Um, you know, this process can be very unwieldy. And while some records can be captured, uh, finding specific uh, records uh, without an archive can be nearly impossible. Also, it's worth mentioning that without technical metadata, should any of the records authenticity be called into question, it becomes very difficult for agencies to prove that records were in fact authentic. Um, finally, even the best screenshot strategy cannot keep up with the constantly changing and dynamic pace of the 24-7 nature of social media. Uh, eventually, a record will be missed that should have been captured. And so, unsurprisingly, uh, this leaves an archiving tool as the superior solution to the record management risks that come along with social media. And we've seen how important social media usage has been in 2020. But unfortunately, the, the social media networks were simply not built with compliance in mind. This means that it's critical to have an archive in place to be in compliance with the record laws in your state. And when evaluating archives, 
a couple things I would recommend to keep in mind to make sure that your archive does what you need it to do to ensure compliance. First, the archive must capture content fast enough to ensure that any deleted or edited content is captured before it's lost. When it comes to being able to prove authenticity of records, as mentioned earlier, full technical metadata needs to be captured. And in order to actually use the captured records, easily understood and digestible file formats must be used. When it comes to searching for records, an archive must be able to have multiple filters and levels of granularity for locating records. And finally, you want your archive to be capable of scoping searches to find and reproduce the most commonly requested records, uh, those being deleted, edited, and hidden comments. Now, we're about to view a live demonstration of the Archive Social Archive, but before we do, I want to highlight something that many government communicators ask me about. John, <laughs> how do I get funding in place for something like a social media archive? And many agencies have CARES Act funding that is still available to them, but it must be used by the end of the year. Any agency that has used social media to share information regarding COVID-19 is eligible to use CARES Act funds to purchase an archive. And we've already worked with several agencies that have used this funding source to set up their archive in 2020. If you have any more uh, questions about this uh, or interested in how your agency might be able to use CARES Act funding to put an archive in place, please make sure in the poll after my demonstration to ask for a specialist at Archive Social to reach out to you. And without further ado, uh, let's take a look at a live archive with the city of Holland, Michigan. So I'm gonna transition my screen here and hope all my technology works. I think it did. Um, now, the city of Holland uh, is actually located on the west side of uh, the state of Michigan on the shores of um, Lake Masatawa. Now, I knew I was going to mispronounce that, so I wanted to make sure I took that one slow, but it's <laughs> nearby Lake Michigan, and um, they've been actually a customer of Archive Social since June of this year, so a relatively newer uh, agency that signed up with us. And when logging into their archive, uh, this is what you see. So Archive Social uh, can actually be accessed from anywhere, very similar to the way that you can, for example, log into Facebook from anywhere. And we call this our dashboard, but it's simply just our home page. And what you'll notice here on the dashboard is that it'll indicate to you, you know, what kinds of social media accounts that you have connected. It looks like Holland has a combination of Facebooks, Instagrams, Twitter, Pinterest, Flickr. Uh, and then this graph, as we looked at earlier, reflects their level of activity over the past uh, six months. And we can see that you know, there was definitely an, an impact of, of COVID-19 in terms of their level of activity increasing. But with Archive Social being totally web-based, we actually do not require any IT support to put Archive Social in place because we don't integrate with your systems internally. Uh, we don't require any software installation or data storage or, any, or anything like that. In fact, most of our customers are up and running, set up with their archive in about no more than 20 minutes. Um, the goal with an archive is for the system to be there when you need it. And so one of the one of the key advantages of having an archive in place is that it does not require any workflow after you've connected your accounts. Moving forward, it is simply there when you need it acting automatically for you. And we do go back retroactively to the creation dates of your social media accounts and capture everything that's still available dating back to the inception dates, and we do that for no additional cost. Now, what I'd like to do from here is really show you um, the biggest reason why agencies put an archive in place, which is to respond to that record request. And with any records request that you may receive, whether it's for social media or not, um, there's always sort of a needle in a haystack scenario where you know somebody's asking for something, and your task or one of your colleagues is tasked with going back in time, finding that information, and then providing it in a way that makes sense. So we try to make this process at Archive Social as seamless as possible for you. Using our search interface, um, we make this extremely 
easy for you to be able to go back and find that needle, so to speak. And there's two different approaches that you can use here, the quick search or the advanced search. And I'll start with the advanced search. This is where you can get very granular and specific with your criteria if you know exactly what you're looking for on the front end. Now, many of you may be familiar with a case study that we did with the city of Spokane, Washington, in which um, they're one of our customers that actually uh, several years ago experienced a lawsuit where there was a legal e-discovery process in which they had to go back and provide two years worth of social media history in order to comply with that e-discovery. E so rather than uh, logging into their Facebook account and scrolling back through two years worth of activity, trying to find what they were looking for, they came in here and adjusted the date range to reflect that two year timeframe. Now, each different social media network comes with a lot of different open channels of communication that exist. And so if we take Facebook as the example, you know, they might be asking you to provide albums and maybe some private messages and timeline activity. In the case with the city of Spokane, they didn't have any specific uh, channels of communication that they were asking for information from. Um, so they just chose all of these channels just to be sure that they were capturing everything. But with all the other networks like Twitter and Instagram, you can filter out these channels so you're not cluttering up your search with irrelevant information. Now, we saw earlier that Holland has right around uh, 30 social media accounts connected to their archive. So a lot of times, you know, there might be records requests that are specific to, to certain departments that are using social media. Um, like for um, Holland, perhaps their public safety department got a record request that was specific to them. They could just search across those accounts as opposed to their entire uh, city's social media presence. And there's no limit to how many search terms you can apply. Uh, and this is really going to be more so related to the, the nature of the request that you receive. Um, most recently, we at Archive Social have been helping our customers with responding to records requests regarding COVID-19 communications. So what a lot of our customers have been doing is adding several different keywords and phrases related to uh, the pandemic. Now, I know back in 2017, we had a customer in Colorado that received a record request for any and all communications regarding oiling, drilling, and fracking that they had communicated about on social media. Uh, and so they were able to come in here and type in each one of those different keywords to ensure that they were being comprehensive about their approach to responding. Now, your agency may not get a record request for oiling, drilling, and fracking, but uh, you get the idea in terms of how you can, uh, based on what's being requested, uh, make sure that any communications that you're looking for are included. Now, you're not limited to just keywords and phrases. Um, oftentimes, we'll help our customers with responding to records requests where you need to go back and run a search for any and all communications between citizen John Doe, for example, where maybe it's a, a customer or a citizen in your community that's uh, causing issues, or you need to go back and you know simply find any and all communications that um, come from that particular individual. This is how you could accomplish that using Archive Social. And finally, as mentioned earlier, with all these First Amendment lawsuits we're seeing uh, across the country, um, with those types of legal issues and requests being the most predominant, um, typically with that type of a situation, it results in the agency having to go back and provide any and all comments or communications that have been hidden or deleted or edited off of their social media accounts. And so since Archive Social automatically identifies and tags for you anything that has been deleted or edited or hidden, uh, this is how you can go back and run a search for that type of information by using the tag as a search term. And that's a really unique aspect of Archive Social. So, what I've done so far is shown you how you can use the advanced search to really filter the information on the front end in an effort to, to uh, try and locate what the person is asking for. Let's go ahead and simulate a live record request. And what I'll do is run what's called a wildcard search. So in essence, this is gonna pull all of Holland's social media records spanning across all their accounts dating back forever. So as you can imagine, uh, we are going to be looking at quite a bit of information here. Uh, definitely going to be too much to try and scroll through and make sense of with the time that we have allotted for today. Um, 
And what you'll notice is that all of the search results are going to pop up here. And in fact, we've got over 165,000 records that exist in their archive in total. So I just sorted it by time and we'll see the most recent social media records made or received by the city. Now, earlier, I showed you how you can use the advanced search to filter the information on the front end. Alternatively, you can simply use the categories on the left-hand side of the screen to filter the information on the back end, kind of like if you're shopping online. This operates really similarly. So if I'm specifically looking for, let's say, some records off of the police services Facebook page, and maybe I'm, I know I'm looking for some records that have been deleted off of their page, um, you can select these categories and continue to filter it down to where uh, just with deleted records, we've taken it down to 968. And then from there, I'll just choose, let's say, deleted photo comments. We've gotten it down to an even smaller number of 381. And if we take it even farther to, let's say, um, June of 2020, uh, then what you'll find is we've been able to narrow the search down to a way more manageable number of 22 deleted photo comments as opposed to the you know, tens of thousands of, of records that we were looking at earlier. Now, none of these records actually exist on Facebook anymore, but they do exist within the archive and they've all been tagged as having been deleted automatically by Archive Social. Now, with any record within the archive, if you click on it, all of the record details pull up. And so what you'll be able to notice is that Archive Social not only uh, captures the content of the communication, but moreover, we also apply a timestamp to it, a digital signature to it, which if you're not sure what a digital signature is, it's kind of like a notary public online. Um, it's a way for us to authenticate the information. And then metadata uh, is also reflected here and captured. Now, it's one thing to know that we have this particular comment, but one of the uh, more unique aspects of Archive Social is our ability to actually provide you with the full context as to where that comment came from what photo it was made in regards to, and perhaps all of the surrounding comments that were also made in reference to this particular post by the police department. You can see, here's that comment, here's all the surrounding comments that were also made, really providing that full context. But once you have uh, located what you're looking for and you're ready to retrieve the information from the archive, any of our customers are more than welcome to give us a phone call and we're happy to assist them with that process. But it's certainly not necessary to contact us in order to get your information when you need it. Um, all you got to do is come up here and click on export results. And the way it works is that our system is designed to send information over email in a series of organized files where you can name the export whatever you like provide an email address to whomever you'd like to send the information to. And um, most of our customers will put their own email address in here first so that they can review the information before forwarding it along to the requester. But if you'd like to send it straight to your requester, you could certainly do that. And then Archive Social also allows for three different format options for your export, uh, PDF, Excel, and HTML. Uh, by far, our PDF export is the most popular. Uh, and I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. Uh, but the reason why is because it's so easy to interpret and make sense of comparatively to Excel and HTML, which we also offer. But before showing an example of the actual export, um, there's a number of ways in which you can customize your export to choose what you would like to provide and what maybe you wouldn't uh, find relevant. So things like um, the images and the videos. So uh, Archive Social doesn't just go and take um, you know, a snippet, so to speak, of, of what's on your social media accounts, because that could miss out on high resolution images and the full length video files. You know, what happens if a, a video gets posted on your page and then later it gets deleted? How can you go back and replay that video? With Archive Social, we're automatically capturing all this information, preserving it within the archive, allowing you to re not only uh, replay those types of multimedia files within the archive, but also allowing you to export those files using these advanced options down here. You can also choose, hey, I know I need to include the metadata 
on our export because uh, we're using this for an investigative reason towards a lawsuit. And perhaps the digital signature token is also important towards that use case. So a lot of uh, flexibility there, but ultimately in terms of what you get from the archive, um, what I've done is I pulled up a real life record request from one of our customers down in Florida, the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office. Now, a couple of years ago, they encountered a situation where they had an individual that uh, was basically commenting on just about every single one of their posts, uh, saying things that were in violation of their social media policy. And so um, per their social media policy, this agency elected to block, ban, and remove this individual from their page, which is of course a hard decision to make, but that's why you have the policy in place. Um, after being uh, moderated, the individual came back and filed a litany of records requests, including for uh, the communications that had been taken down off of the Sheriff's Office uh, Facebook page. So by using Archive Social, they were able to provide him with that information uh, very easily. And that's what we're looking at here. Now, Archive Social automatically populates this cover page for you. And it essentially outlines the search criteria that you perform. Most importantly, though, down here, it denotes any records that meet the above search criteria are going to be highlighted in yellow. So I would say the most unique aspect of Archive Social's export is our ability to fully reconstruct these communication threads the way that they took place on the networks, reinsert the search results where they took place within those threads to provide the full context as to where all of these records came from, what they were made in regards to, and again, all the surrounding comments that were also made. We can very easily tell here that um, this individual, you know, he's in all caps, he's copying and pasting the same thing over and over on many different occasions. I think there's a post down here where he may have uh, you know, commented several different times on the same post. So what this allowed the sheriff's office to do is to prove that history of him violating their policy. And with that, um, you know, this is what, what I've gone through today so far in the product is how we go about capturing information, how we make that information available for customers to easily search for, and finally, what the export looks like. So, uh, Megan, I believe there is a bit of a poll uh, that we were hoping to uh, accomplish today before getting into the um, Q&A. Yes. Thank you so much, John. Sorry, slow on the mute there. Um, all right, everyone. So before we get into Q&A, I know that we've thrown a lot of information at you today in a short amount of time. So I wanted to do a quick check-in and see if you wanted to further discuss any of these items after the webinar today. So this is where you can let us know if you'd like to be contacted to understand your state laws for public record responsibility, find out if your social media or website is non-compliant, further discuss CARES funding for your public entity, learn more about Archive Social and other products, or all of the above. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about any of these topics, or all of them for that matter, please let us know and we will follow up with you after today's event. So I'm gonna leave this poll up um, for a little bit while we go ahead and get started with some Q&A. All right, so John, um, we had a question come in in advance asking, would the contents of a personal non-official Facebook account that answers school district issues be included in a social media records request? Yeah, really, really great question that came in, Megan. It's one that I uh, get from public communicators quite a lot. Um, and I think this is a, a big hot topic nowadays because obviously it's really easy for uh, an elected official or, or, you know, like a chief of police or um, a council member to to use their own personal profile to chime in on more agency related business. And so what we're finding is that with the records laws that are in place, they are not written to be um, addressing the, the, the medium in which content is being transacted or the type of account in which uh, communications are being transacted. It all comes down to the content of what's being communicated. And if a particular communication based on the content could be um, construed as being related to official agency business, like in the case of this question, where you know you might have a, a, an employee that's using a, a personal profile to chime in on more agency-related business, then those communications uh, would be 
uh, included in the, the public record law and the responsibility typically uh, of the agency to, to ensure record keeping of. And that's something that, uh, you know, if, if, if your agency has um, uh, elected officials, council members, staff members that are maybe using social media in a similar way, uh, we would love to, to talk to you more about how to reduce risk around that, ensure compliance uh, with the, the record laws. Awesome. Um, we had another question come in asking, uh, an opposing candidate for a treasurer position who lost is now using this com um, public entity's treasurer Facebook to get exposure, their page, to get exposure for the 2024 election. So what can they do? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, so I know a lot of times when I'm on, uh, you know, calls with with government communicators, one of the big concern areas out there is, especially so when agencies lose control over a particular social media account. Uh, and in this case, that sounds exactly like what's happening, where you have uh, an individual who no longer holds the official position, but they still hold the the keys, so to speak, uh, for your Facebook page. And so. Um, what I'd say is that there are ways in which uh, I would recommend you reach out to Facebook directly uh, as they have processes in place for you to regain control over that account. Um, there are, is some documentation and some um, uh, rules that they have set up to, to provide them with to make sure that they know that you're, you are who you say you are, but um, there's moreover, um, and we can send you some information uh, following the webinar today, but there is a Facebook group uh, that you can join for public agencies and school districts where you'll actually get responses from Facebook. It's called uh, the Facebook for Government Politics and Advocacy in North uh, America Facebook group. And so that might be one good starting point uh, to maybe um, reach out in that group, uh, reach out to Facebook, explain to them what situation you have going on uh, and try to get some um, uh, administrative access back over uh, that page. Thanks for the question. Awesome. All right, Jamsu, you covered a lot about, um, you know, how you can be compliant with records that are public, but are there any records that don't have to be shared and what and what are those? Absolutely. And this is not, um, you know, this is not unique to social media. Um, I think uh, with any uh, form of communication and with all the record laws, there's always going to be um, communications that are uh, redacted from public record for, for some reasons or another. Um, and so Archive Social fully supports agencies that uh, need to be able to redact certain types of information from the public record law through our built-in retention requirements within the archive. Uh, some examples of, of things that, you know, off the top of my head that I can think of that may not need to be shared would be um, if you're a school district and you have um, uh, sensitive inf information regarding a minor. Uh, that, that of course wouldn't be uh, subject to the record law. Um, you know, I can think of some some other examples, like if you're a law enforcement agency and uh, perhaps you receive information on Facebook that could lead to an arrest, like a crime tip uh, or something along those lines. A lot of times, that information that's related to an ongoing investigation wouldn't be uh, subject to the record law until that investigation has been completed. And so, those are just a couple examples of information that certainly would not be, um, uh, you know. Uh, subject to the record law would not be, you, you know, you wouldn't need to actually provide. Uh, but I think um, uh, most agencies have found that it's really uh, oftentimes difficult to differentiate between, you know, what you do need to provide and what you don't need to provide on a continuous fashion. And so um, they just choose to uh, store everything on the front end and then choose per your policies what needs to be shared and what doesn't on the back end. Awesome. Um, before we get into the next question, I'm going to go ahead and just give a heads up that I will be closing out the poll here. So if you have not answered, um, feel free to go ahead and do so now. All right. And the poll is now closed. Um, let's continue with some Q&A. Sure. So, John, a question came in that asked, you know, what is a basic package price at? And would this be considered a social media expense or a legal expense? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so on pricing, um, we, we at Archive Social are extremely transparent about all of our pricing. Uh, since we strictly work with public agencies, we operate a, a standardized pricing model and we make that pricing available on our website. Uh, our smallest package is um, comes out to right around uh, $2,400 for the year. It's called our economy plan. Um, but you'll notice on our pricing page, there's a series of uh, 
uh, pricing packages that, uh, you know, are designed to reflect the level of activity that you have on social media. So we try to make our pricing model to be as scalable as possible, fitting the needs of agencies, small and large. Uh, but in terms of this being considered a social media expense or a legal expense, you know, I've seen it go a, a number of different ways. Um, I think that's really up to your agency to decide uh, what would make the most sense. Um, a lot of times our uh, folks that we consult with will tap into IT budgets or will um, use communication budgets or legal budgets, uh, just depending on, on what the agency uh, thinks would make, make sense. Uh, we've also had a lot of success with agencies splitting up costs amongst various different departments internally that are using social media uh, in an effort to try to um, share the cost internally as obviously uh, you know every department within a particular agency is going to be subject to the same the same record laws so um, if anybody on the, the webinar today has uh, any questions about our pricing or what uh, specific uh, pricing plan would make the most sense uh, to your agency uh, please feel free to, to reach out to us, let us know, uh, and we'd be happy to get a specialist uh, to discuss that with you. Perfect. And the next question on the head coming is, is it a law or just good practice to have a social media archive um, practice set up? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question as well. And, um, uh, you know, I selfishly would say as an account executive here at Archive Social that uh, it would be very nice to say, of course, it's the law and it's a, a, a mandate that you have to have uh, an archive. But uh, frankly, it is the law that agencies must retain public records in order to ensure compliance with the record law. Uh, and in practice, most agencies have determined that in order to retain public records of social media, because you can't rely on the networks and because of how quickly records can get lost from the networks, having an automated archive is really the only way to retain that content uh, in a, in, again in a way that keeps up with the the dynamic nature of the social media network awesome and if a organization's facebook page is tied to their personal profile um does archive social archive their personal profile as well yeah so on that, um, most, I'd say the overwhelming majority of our customers prefer to not have their personal profiles being archived. Um, I can think of a couple exceptions in the case of, you know, if, if a personal pro profile is being used to conduct agency business, in that case, many of our customers do choose to keep them uh, archived. Um, but it is a requirement on Facebook's end to have a personal profile tied to any official organization page. Even though that's the case on Facebook's end, on Archive Social's end, um, when you set up your archive, um, we provide you with the ability to choose which accounts and pages associated with the personal profile you would like to have archived and which ones you would not. Um, so we kind of let you choose uh, if you would like to archive the personal profile or not. But again, for the most part, most of our customers choose not to. Awesome. All right. So uh, next question for you, John. Do you have a solid resource for government agency policy or best practices on social media, particularly surrounding hiding and deleting comments? Absolutely. And um, this is something that we do a lot of uh, work with agencies across the country on because um, really, if, if your agency does not already have some sort of policy in place, we feel there's really no point in recreating the wheel on something that other agencies have already sort of put their heads together on. And so what we've done at Archive Social is we've taken best practices from a number of leading government agencies across the country, and we put together a social media policy template uh, that we make available at no cost to agencies. And we encourage agencies to use it as a draft to create your own version or literally copy and paste it verbatim. Um, there's two facets to the policy that we provide. There's the internal sort of HR or employee use policy that kind of outlines, you know, what you're going to tolerate, what you're not going to tolerate. Uh, from an employee perspective, what's professional, what's not. Um, and then there's the external facing piece, which is more public facing. And a lot of agencies will post that portion on the about section of their Facebook page or on their website to make it uh, publicly available. But that's more along the lines of uh, what your um, policies are around moderating comments, the types of content that you will tolerate and what you won't. Um, I think what's important in moderating comments in general is that um, first, always consult your, your legal team internally if there's any, ever any doubt, uh, but two, 
it's always important to moderate on the basis of content and not opinion. And so that's really why having a policy in place is so critical, is to give you some reasonable ground rules or, uh, you know, um, to take action upon something. Um, where a lot of agencies have gotten into some uh, legal battles is when they moderate on the basis of opinion as opposed to the basis of, of content per policy. Awesome. Thank you, John. Um, next question. Does the archive only cover accounts from when somebody starts with us or can it go back years before if needed? Yes, yeah, so we are actually designed to go back retroactively or historically uh, to the creation dates of your social media accounts and capture everything that's still available. And we do that for no additional cost. Um, one caveat there is that that um, kind of uh, last uh, phrase I had there, which is uh, still available. So if something had been deleted, historically speaking, of course, uh, we can't pick up on that because it's um, you know no longer it no longer exists. But uh, moving forward, we would have you on, on those types of things. Awesome. Um, in regards to CARES Act funding, how long does the archive go for if if purchased with CARES Act? Yeah, so our typical, I mean, uh, our typical um, relationship uh, would be to do a 12-month agreement. Then now that that's uh, variable agency by agency. Some agencies prefer to go ahead and set up the archive for for more than one year, um, and so that funding certainly would um, uh, be available for you to purchase an archive for however long uh, you would like uh, on that initial period. Uh, obviously, we all know that uh, the CARES Act funding uh, may or may not be available in, in future years, depending on kind of how everything goes. Um, so um, our goal at Archive Social is obviously to uh, earn and establish a long-term relationship with, with any uh, agency that, that sees the need uh, to retain their social media records. And by using CARES Act funding, especially with other budget deficits, uh, it's proven to be a, um, and, and coupled with the increase in social media activity as a result of the, the um, COVID-19 pandemic, it's proven to be an easy way to uh, to get funding in place and get your agency protected as soon as possible. Um, but um, you know, ultimately, we want to we want to earn uh, and prove to you that um, you know we are uh, bringing you the highest level of compliance. And then uh, at any point in time, uh, we allow our customers to cancel at any time. Um, so obviously, that's not our goal. But if that turns out to be the case, and the, you know the funding is no longer available, then um, then that's uh, uh, no issues on our end. Perfect. And I've got one last question for you, John, um, before we wrap up. Uh, so if anybody has any more final questions, please submit them. Uh, but do you have an example of a retention schedule for social media? Yeah. Um, so I know uh, retention schedules vary uh, not only state by state, but also agency by agency. Um, I do have some retention schedules specifically for social media in various states. If you're interested in learning more about some of the retention schedules and how they apply in your state, um, feel free to reach out to us and we can get, uh, have a conversation with you and kind of walk through that. Uh, I will say though that uh, mostly uh, retention schedules do vary agency by agency per whatever you get approved by your state. So there's not always going to be like a blanket retention requirement put out by the state that says you have to keep social media records for X amount of time. Oftentimes what the state says is you are um, responsible for retaining social media records, but it's up to you to determine uh, what that retention uh, period is going to be, and you must get that that schedule or that um, uh, retention, uh, uh, you know, rule set up uh, and approved by uh, the state. So, we at Archive Social, moreover, from a product perspective, support agencies in their abilities to comply with their retention schedules. So, by default, our system is designed to keep everything forever. But obviously, if you do have specific retention requirements where you must rid yourself of information. Uh, after a specific time frame, uh, we have built-in retention rules that you can customize to fit those needs. Perfect. And a final question um, for you, John. Does Archive Social just provide Archive Social Media post comments and replies on Facebook, or such services encompass other platforms such as Nextdoor, Instagram, Twitter, etc.? Yeah. So for any social media network that has a publicly available what's called API or app applications programs interface. Um, we do archive it. Uh, and so that includes Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Flickr, Pinterest, um, Vimeo, uh, just to name a few. Um, and of course, as newer social media networks come out and agencies see value in using it, um, so long as there's an API that we can tap into to uh, archive it, 
Uh, we'll do the work on our end to, to make sure that we do so. Uh, one that was mentioned in that particular question though is Nextdoor. And unlike most of the other social media networks, um, Nextdoor has actually been built for government. And so Nextdoor is self-archiving and they provide a self-archiving tool that you can access all of your records directly through Nextdoor uh, at no additional cost. And um, if you reach out to us, we can provide you with that information. Um, they don't provide an API to any third party application like us. And so archiving next door is not uh, possible at this point in time. But of course, if that were to change in the future, uh, we would we would do the work on our end to make it work. But for now, uh, luckily, you can rely on next door for any of your, your retention needs. Awesome. Well, I think we are about that time um, to go ahead and wrap it up, John. So if you have any final words, please share them now. Sure thing. And, and Megan, I really appreciate you facilitating uh, this afternoon. But I guess you know, beyond everything that we've covered today, I just wanted to share my deep appreciation for all government communicators out there who are you know, struggling in, in 2020 dealing with being a communicator in the face of all the issues that have come up across the country, uh, in the face of likely taking measures to have to quarantine and or work uh, a hybrid in office and at home routine, you know, balancing your your personal lives with your, your official duties. Um, as mentioned towards the outset of this webinar, I've, I've been working with public communicators for over five years now, and I've never experienced anything that has impacted uh, your day-to-day -day as much as the events of 2020 have. And um, we at Archive Social want you to know that you are very much appreciated, valued, and necessary in keeping us all informed and, and safe. And um, so very much appreciate everybody's time uh, taking out of your busy schedules uh, to spend it with us this afternoon. Thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.